Good afternoon, guys. It's working, bringing you a quick update on Bitcoin. Hope you guys are having a wonderful afternoon. I'm uh, looking at the weekly chart, guys, um, and I wanted to start off here because, again, I think the bigger picture is just so important to kind of understand what's going on here, guys. Um, looking at the weekly chart, we've just had, of course, this beautiful breakout above the three areas of resistance that I've been talking about for the last uh, you know, a month or two or two months, three months, something like that. Um, and we came up here, guys, and we just had a perfect hit. Um, right off the 618 FIB level. In other words, if I go, or excuse me, right off that golden pocket between the 618 and the 65 FIB level. So if I come over here and we drop, we go swing high, swing low. Uh, we can see we just perfect technical hit right inside that golden pocket there. Why is that so significant? Well, excuse me, for a few reasons, guys. If we come back here, and we look at, I, I pointed this out before, we have kind of this uh, this no man's land, this area of strong resistance, even though to the naked eye, it's not quite as obvious, right here. In fact, a lot of people are saying they didn't see any resistance in there at all, which is just not true. We can see, as I pointed out last time, guys, as price was coming up here, that was the first major pivot point where it came back down and we had a nice retracement before continuing back up. So that was sitting right there at that $5,000 mark. And then finally, we were able to push through that $5,000 to about $5,800 area. And what was resistance started acting as support right here. And we created kind of a demand zone uh, right here. And of course, all throughout 2018, price just bounced right on top of that demand zone, unable to break through it. Excuse me. And then finally, when we did, anytime a major uh, support or resistance, but in this case support, is broken, it breaks through with a vengeance. And that's what we saw here when price fell from that uh, 6000 all the way down to our about $3,150 uh, low uh, for 2018. Or excuse me, 20, what was that, 2019? Or is that the, the, end of, the end of 2018? Yeah, December of 2018. Um, so that was, that was uh, an ex this is an extremely relevant zone. So not only is that the the golden pocket, if we go swing high, swing low, hitting perfectly there, but it's also obvious, uh, was also known, an area of known resistance, even though it's to the naked eye, it's not quite as obvious unless you kind of draw it out there. That was an area of known resistance that I had been talking about for quite some time. <clears throat> But that 618 FIB level, guys, is going to be just the, the, the golden pocket between the 618 and the 65. That is going to be extremely key to get above, guys. Um, if we look back here, and this is why I do think we have a little bit more downside to go. I do think that uh, whether or not this is just a full-on uh, bull trap is yet to be seen. But I, I absolutely think that we do have some more uh, some more downside to go. Um, it doesn't mean that has to happen. I mean, if this is the bull run that everyone's been waiting for, it should just fly up here, you know, well through 6,000 and just disregard all the areas of resistance on its way up. Um, and that, you know, that, that certainly is possible. But until that happens, Happens, guys we, we have to keep our you know we have to keep our wits about us and we have to look at what the charts are telling us and the charts telling us guys that we should have um, uh, will likely have a little bit of a pullback in fact anytime you break a major area of resistance which 4120 there's no question 4120 which was a, was a major area of resistance at least on most on a lot of exchanges like coinbase like uh, like bitstamp that was a, a major area of resistance it was a little bit higher on bitfinex as I've always told you but this area no matter what exchange you're looking at we, we, we broke whether it was at 30 at, at excuse me, at 42.50 on Bitfinex or at 41.20 on Coinbase, this area was an extremely, extremely hard resistance to get through. I bring that up because uh, probability-wise, anytime a major resistance is broken through, oftentimes probability, I, I, I can't remember the exact number, it's like 60, 70%, it'll come back down and retest that that resistance and it should start to act, start to act as support. So that alone would tell you the probability-wise we're going to come back down and test that support. Doesn't mean it has to happen, uh, just means you know probability-wise it will. But looking at this, the fact that we we found resistance right at that golden pocket. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and draw it out here again, just to emphasize my point. Right at that golden pocket, guys, um, and, and bounced hard, rejected hard right off that area, is very very relevant. Until we get above that, guys, be very very careful. So let me point this out. Let me let me go ahead and make my point. If we come back here, and of course we had our major breakdown here um, for uh, for 2018. If we come back here, we come back to the uh, to the swing high of this zone here, and we go swing high swing low for this little microstructure where did from this swing high to this swing low where did price retrace right to that golden pocket hit that golden pocket and then right back down continued right back down now, again we're looking at the weekly so you know continued right back down is a relative turn you know it took two weeks to continue right back down but looking at the overall chart hit that zone and bounced right off it hard all right so let's come back to the next swing high which is right here swing high swing low there we go. Swing high, swing low. Where did the swing high um, retrace to? Once again, 
right there perfectly at that golden pocket. Hit that golden pocket and then rejected hard. Came right back down. In case you think two times is just a coincidence, let's go for a third. Swing high. <coughs> Excuse me, one second, guys. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I had to pause the video. The uh, been a new climate up here, and the allergies are killing me. So anyway, uh, swing high, swing low, and I'll zoom in here so you guys can see a little bit better. What do we have? Perfect hit right again off of that golden pocket, right there between that 618 fib level and that 65 fib level. Now, it doesn't always happen that way. Um, in fact, <clears throat> In fact, if we go to the next swing high, swing low, so and, and then it, I mean it gets so small that you're that you're uh, that you start to uh, split hairs because we were getting you know we were converging in that uh, 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 descending triangle there, and of course it got so small that it was just almost impossible to measure. But let's go ahead and measure it anyway. Swing high, swing low, and this time we didn't quite make it to our six five. We bounced pretty close right there to the fifty. But you're getting my point, guys. Um, it, it, any anything anything or below that golden pocket is still just a continuation of the trend in this case the downtrend so we we really we've got to break above this golden pocket guys uh, to to really solidify this uptrend to really solidify the fact that bitcoin has bottomed out and we're heading back up and the real the even a wick above that guys would not really be the nail in the coffin for the bears the nail in the coffin for the bears would be breaking above this zone and then coming back down and retesting in what was resistance should act as support and a bounce off that zone. If and when that does happen, guys, that's the nail in the coffin for the for the uh, for the bears. Zooming in on the daily chart, guys, we can see um, that this little order structure right back here was really the last stand before the bulls uh, just completely lost it and the bears took full control. Um, and so this and this is that area that's right there at that 618. We can see that's exactly the area where it hit. So really, again, this is that zone that we need to get through. Uh, there's 5350 to uh, 5600, and we need to see that start acting as support um, before we can consider a uh, a possible bottom being or a bottom being in. Now, a possible bottom is certainly in, guys. The fact that we broke up above four. 4120, very good sign. The fact that we've done it with volume, a very good sign. And regardless of which way this, even if this thing comes back down and ends up being a complete bull trap, this is exactly what the market needed uh, to uh, to end up turning around, guys. This is what we needed. We're going to either get a lot of um, uh, a lot of guppies at the last remaining amount of guppies out of the market if this thing crashes right back down, and we'll be able to rebuild and finally head right back up. Or FOMO is just going to take this thing up to new highs. Uh, but right now, I'm very skeptical, guys. This is happening very very quickly. Um, and, and it's not really backed by any fundamental news. Um, oh, I mean, of course, there's always some good fundamental news coming out, but nothing that would justify just out of the blue uh, price uh, price skyrocketing like that. Um, so, you know, this is either, you know, it could be some insider trading going on and there could be some major fundamental news coming out. That's a possibility or it's a real possibility. This is all just a complete uh uh, bull trap. So we'll have to wait and see kind of how this ends up playing out. But there's no question we have to clear this area uh, right here between 5350 and 5600, as I said. And then right above that, of course, we have our major area of resistance that it bounced up along um, all throughout 2018, and that's between 5800 and 6000. Of course, that's our our our. It's not only a major psychological level, but that's the area that price bounced along for all of 2018. What was a major uh, support needs to start acting again as a major resistance. So there's quite a few areas of uh, of uh, of resistance that price has to get above before we're out of the woods yet. Looking at our indicators, again, this is on the daily. Um, we can see that the uh, daily RSI, very overbought, sitting at about 89. Again, uh, that's, uh, uh, that is that is suggesting we should see at least some kind of a pullback here soon. And looking at the MACD, we can see the uh, the signal line and the MACD line are extremely stretched, guys. You kind of sometimes think about this as a, uh, think about these lines as kind of a rubber band. They can only get stretched so hard. And typically, the the, the harder and the, the, the longer, I should say, that they are stretched, the more stretched out they get, just like a rubber band, the faster and the harder they bounce back in the other direction. Now, that's not always the case, guys. So no question, that's, there's always exceptions. Um, but uh, but again, until we see the exception, guys, you have to go by probability. And probability says we should see a, a, a nice little snapback here in the next uh, in the next week or so. 
Now, looking at the daily, guys, this was significant. This was a massive win for the bulls. The fact that we were able to decisively, not just break above the 200-day moving average, but decisively break above. In other words, we've had a daily candle now of opening and closing, yesterday's candle opening and closing above the 200-day moving average. No question that's a major win for the bulls. Does that mean that we are, uh, the we're just going to continue on up here? No. In fact, you know, this was the first time we've broke above the 200-day moving average in a very, very long time, guys. And that, again, that's, uh, I can't under, I, I can't overemphasize the the significance of that. It's extremely significant. That being said, um, a break above the 200-day moving average does not mean that price isn't going to come back down. In fact, oftentimes the first time you break through, there's a massive. Uh, um, a lot of people end up shorting the market. There's a there's a massive snapback in the other direction. Everyone thinks this is a great opportunity to short. So it, it, this is just a temporary rise. It snaps back down, and then it ends up going back up on the bull run. In fact. Let me, let me look back at this. In fact, if I come back here, uh, where did we first break from? Yeah, for, so if we're looking back at the bull run of 2017, and then of course the, the fall here in 2018, the first time price went from above and broke the 200 day moving average to the downside, Look what happened. We broke the 200-day moving average to the downside. Now, that was a major win for the bears. This was the signal that the bear market had started. But what happened? Did the price just continue right back down? Quite the opposite. We hit below the 200-day moving average, and then it spiked right back up. And, of course, all the guppies said, yep, we bottomed out. We're heading back up. The bull market has continued, and we headed all, We went you know, all the way down from about $6,000 all the way up to about $12,000, well, about eleven seven. dollars um, And then, of course, what happened? Then it just completely reversed course. We had a major snapback, completely reversed course, and, of course, you know, ushered in the, the bear market um, through all of 2018. So just because we've broken above, decisively broken above the 200-day moving average, does not mean we won't get a massive snapback on the other direction. Doesn't mean we have to. Certainly doesn't mean we have to. But it's definitely possible. In fact, I would say almost probable at this point. Looking at longs versus shorts, we're kind of at a standoff. We had shorts completely get liquidated, and then as fast as they dropped, they almost climbed just as fast here, guys. Um, and, and of course, I think this led to a lot of the uh, that that little secondary spike that we had from just under five thousand to about uh, what would it go to about fifty three hundred ish. Uh, yeah. What uh, anyway? I'm not going to go back and look, but yeah, somewhere around uh, fifty three hundred. Um, and so I, you know, I think a lot of that was trying to liquidate short positions, and they did a little bit, um, but they they overall shorts have held strong. Looking at longs, we're seeing a little bit of a drop off in longs. We had a nice little rise there, a little bit of a drop off in longs now. And I think the market is taking a breath, waiting to see retail is waiting to see how this is going to end up playing out. And I also see, think that market makers are sitting here waiting to see what retail is going to do so they know which way to drive the market. Um, so, the, um, you know, I, that again, that's pure speculation on my part, just complete speculation. But there's but there's no question that we're seeing a, a pause. We saw a nice stacking in the longs, saw a nice stacking in shorts. A little bit of a drop off. Now there's this pause, this awkward pause to wait and see what retail is going to do and wait and see if market makers react in kind. So it's very interesting. Keep an eye on longs versus shorts, guys. Definitely, if we if one starts stacking while the other starts dropping, watch out. That's a, I mean, depending on which way it's going, um, watch out for the liquidation move. Um, so if longs are stacking, watch out for the drop to liquidate. If shorts are stacking, watch out for the rise to liquidate. Looking at volume, volume sitting at about uh, 20.8 billion on the day, guys. That is just phenomenal, phenomenal volume. Yes, a lot of that is wash trading. I always get your comments saying, don't you know there's a lot of, yes, we understand. A lot of this is wash trading, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but real volume, some of those exchanges that, uh, or excuse me, some of those uh, uh, sites that track real volume is also up double digits. So yes, this is, you know, a lot of this is wash trading. A lot of this is also real volume as well. I, the majority is probably fake volume, but, but there's no question the real volume is going up substantially. So we see, and, and all we can do is look at it as a whole. And looking at it as a, as a whole, guys, I mean, we, we, we literally more than doubled in volume um, overnight, literally overnight, um, if we're just, just looking at volume here, guys. Um, so this is, I mean, we've been, we've been in, uh, yeah, we've been above 20 billion for three days now. And if it can close again above 20 billion on the day, that's that's not insignificant. That is incredible. So yes, we're definitely getting enough volume to push the market. Now that also means that the, the market could tank. I mean, just because we've got a lot of volume behind there means that we could get major moves, but it doesn't just mean we could get a major move up. We could get a major move down as well. Um, so, but but it, overall, it's a very very bullish thing that we're seeing so much interest into the in the uh, in the market right now. Now I think we're going to pull back um, in the next. Uh, I think by the end of this week, I think 
by Sunday. In the next few days here, we're going to likely pull back to 4,500 um, or 4550 ish somewhere there about somewhere to the top of this order block right back here. Um, at least, if not uh, if not this area right here between 44 and 4250, if not our all important 4120 zone here. And this is the zone, the 4120. That's the zone that has to hold. This is the zone that has to start acting as support. If it does not, then we can just count this all as a bull trap, guys, and watch out below. I don't think we're going to come down to create new lows. I think the low, if that if that does happen, and I'm not saying it's likely, but if it does happen, I think we'd be coming down and and at the most testing the prior low at about the, you know 3150, 3200. I, th I think that's as low as it would go. I don't think that's probable. I think that's possible though that we we could go that low, but I don't think it's going to go low. That I, I I still believe that the likelihood the bottom is in. Very likely the bottom is in. It's just a matter of are we going to retest that volume on the way up. But the, but guys, this is this was a very 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 bullish move, regardless of this ended up being a bull trap. It was a very bullish move, a much needed move to get the market overall long-term moving in the right direction. So how am I playing this, guys? I've got buy orders stacked here at 4,500 all the way down to uh, 4,100 with a tight stop loss right below that, knowing that if that does break down, the 4,100 does break down, or excuse me, 4,000 does end up breaking down, guys. Um, I uh, it, It'll be, in my opinion, it's going to crash through 39, crash through 38, and very likely come down to 36 to 3550. Um, if that happens again, not saying it's going to, just saying that's kind of how I'm playing this. And if, if we can get below 4,000, guys, and down into this area, I will scoop up Bitcoin down here all day long. Um, um, again, but I think uh, I think there's also a real possibility, and if it does play out this way over the next. Um, uh week or so, I think this would be an extremely bullish sign. I think there's a good chance that we do, you know, something like this over the next week. And what does that look like? Obviously, that looks kind of like a little bull flag here. So I wouldn't be surprised to maybe see something, you know, something like this over the next week and then a, a, a possible breakout. I think this would be the most bullish scenario. Do I think that's going to happen? I, I, I think it's I think it's definitely on the table. I think this is the most bullish scenario. Uh, well, I mean, us just exploding back up and all rationale going out the window and foaming in, that'd be the most bullish scenario if we're just talking about probably. But, you know, if I just, just looking probability-wise, TA-wise, I think that we'll get a little bit of a, treat, a retrace and a retrace, something like this, creating a little bull flag here and this just continuing right back up, I do think would be the most bullish scenario just from a pure... Um, um, analyst perspective. Now, again, this uh, if if FOMO does take over, guys, you know this is this can become a very irrational market very very quickly, and all the TA in the window could get thrown out. And we could cut through 6K like butter. I don't think that's going to happen, guys. Um, I think we're going to see a little more retracement first, but it certainly can happen, especially with volume like we're seeing there. Your first sign, if that is going to happen, I do think your first sign is going to be coming over and looking at longs versus shorts. If you see shorts stacking off the board with longs stagnant or falling off, get ready for another short squeeze and get ready for price to crash up above uh, major areas of resistance. So anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it there. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. As always, would appreciate an upvote if you have enjoyed this content. Till next time, guys, please trade safe. Take care of yourselves. This is working. Signing out.